What is the law of attraction? Magnetism. Man, what do you mean by that? It's magnetism. Um, you have magnetic consciousness. Um, within the five percent teachings of the nation of gods and earths, which is my foundation, you will have that there's um they state that there's five stages of consciousness. Um we added two more in order to make it seven. You have interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness, subconsciousness, super consciousness, and then magnetic consciousness. Magnetic consciousness is the sixth level. So the one in which that is only higher than a law of attraction or the law of magnetic consciousness is that of infinite consciousness, which is the seventh um, stage of consciousness. But the law of attraction is um, is on the sixth stage, which is the law of, um, of magnetism. Mm. Magnetism meaning we attract what? What we think about? Bingo. Okay, so this is the, one of the main questions people want to know. Let's talk about accidents, brother. Let's talk about, let's say a brother gets robbed. Let's say a brother gets shot. Let's say something horrible happens to a brother. Now, we all know, we don't want, I, you don't want nothing bad to happen to you. I don't want nothing bad to happen to me. Right. But I've been in an accident before. I've been in a car accident mm -hmm. where a car ran over my leg. But I damn sure ain't wanted to run over my leg. But for some reason, it ran over my leg. Right. Now, what is that? What is is it really an accident, or what? What is it? Synchronicity? You tell me. What is it, brother Ali? Well, that begins at the subconscious level. All right. Mm. The subconscious mind um, resonates at the heart. Mm -hmm. All right. So you talking about your heart's desires. So if you embed negativity into the heart, then guess what? You're gonna bring into intuition that which that you put there. So the science is is that you learn how to put positive instead of negative into that area because the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's fantasy and what's wrong um, right because yeah. to it it only acts off of what you tell it yeah and that's how it operates so if you tell it something good then guess what it's going to bring what's good and what mm. they, that that you gave it into existence mm. if you continue constantly being bombarded with the negativity with the badness mm. in the subconscious then guess what even you have to make a conscious, um, 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 you have to make a very conscious effort in order to correct the negativity in which that you have lodged into the subconscious mind. You have to go back and tell the subconscious mind um, everything was that you have put there that you are no longer operating from that, from that, um, from that view. You're no longer operating from that scope. You're no longer operating from that limit, um, from that um, limited. Um, um, perception. If you don't, then guess what? The subconscious mind will continue to bring into um, um, fruition that which that you put there. Mm -hmm. That's deep, brother. That's deep. That, 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 that's real deep. Because a lot of people, they don't realize that they're bringing about their own demise. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like, what role does I, let's say you, you would type you a brother or you a sister that watches TV, the television, right. the media, mm -hmm. you're constantly watching TV, you're a positive individual, but you're constantly watching TV, and as we all know, ain't nothing but garbage on TV, so what role does the television play in the subconscious mind, the music, the, 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 sh the reality shows, how is this affecting our minds? Well, the average person watches almost, um, what, 270,000 hours of television um, um, yearly. Mm, yeah. so, so, I mean, you're talking about that much um, hours going into something on which that you're not benefiting anything from. Um, the TV, um, the channels on which that you can benefit from, which most people don't watch, is the Sci-Fi Channel, mm. the, Histor the um, History Channel, um, a and &E, and um, um, I think they have a new channel now that was called the Life Channel, in which they, they actually um, have on metaphysical type of um, shows and yoga and qigong and tai chi and all that type of stuff on it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So those shows, you know what I'm saying? Those particular um, channels are good in order to watch on a daily basis. You're learning, you're learning something from it. Um, PBS used to be good back in the days in order to watch something from. But most of the channels, the only thing you got is comedy and murder. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So if you keep putting murder, 
violence within your um, subconscious, um, then that's how you're going to um, react. You know, if you think it's about thug life, then, you know, then that's what you're going to project. <laughs> that's what you're going to project. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because that's what you've been inundated with um, for probably most most of your life. You know what I'm saying? With that nonsense, mm. you know? So, I mean, if that's the way that they acting, you know, then that's the, well, I should say, if that's what they see from the actors, then that's how they're going to end up eventually acting it out themselves. Because mm -hmm. they believe that this is what it is to be, you know what I'm saying, is a thug, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, a thug get love, you know what I'm saying, that's how they believe it, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Brother I mean, the, the movie The Secret right. touched on um, creative visualization. Mm -hmm. Explain to the people, what would you call creative visualization? The power of imagination. The power of imagination. The power of imagination. Putting yourself in, you seeing yourself in what you want in life. Mm -hmm. so, Imagining what you see yourself to be in life. Right, right. So mm -hmm. you put yourself um, in your vision having food, clothing, and shelter, mm. you know what I'm saying, which is the basic foundation of life, mm. you know what I'm saying, you need those things, um, you know, so, you know, it's not like, I mean, even though it's a mundane level, that's the basic level, that's the level which that you have to begin from in mm. order to understand, understand, and understand that that's the power of the mind, mm. and that even though you're utilizing the lower self in order to bring about a chain reaction into the higher self, it must begin there, mm. you know. So the science is, is that you visualize yourself um, going through the actions. Mm. And once again, the subconscious mind doesn't know what's real and what's fantasy. Mm. So the more you visualize yourself doing a particular thing, the more the mind reacts mm. to what you've given it. Mm. And so it brings it to fruition once again, that which you give it. And this mm. is the whole science of the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you visualize a house, you know, um, in a specific details on what you want, you see yourself entering through the door, mm -hmm. you know, and you see yourself going up the stairs. You know, if you look and you see that um, 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 that there's a, um, a jewelry box or whatever, and you go into the jewelry box and you pick up a particular jewel, um, uh, whether it be a ruby or a pearl, you know what I'm saying, you're picking up these jewels in the box. Mm. However the case may go, the more detail that you can give to the, um, to the creative visualization, the more that the mind begins to tell the body that it is, and therefore it manifests it into existence. Mm. Now wh why is that? Is that because, uh, now, now they keep talking about this being a holographic universe. Right. Now we're getting more advanced than the secret. Well, we're not dealing with just you think something right. and, 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 and it happens. We're dealing with why does what's the science behind this happening? Well, this what's the science behind this being a holographic universe and us being able to manipulate it? Well, there's a book called The um, Holographic Universe. It was written by Michael, Michael Tobo. Yeah. Um, that book is a book in which that um, explained everything which that they, that they talk about in the secret prior mm. to. The fact is, is that man is the microcosm of the macrocosm mm. which is the universe so man okay. is the universe in miniature form oh so that means oh. everything that's in the universe man already has within himself Damn. so therefore there is no limitless there is no limit to what man can um um to make in which that he has access to which is the universal um, um, powers the uh, universe spans um 76 um um, um, um what 76 um what they say, 76 trillion miles, and and and, and, it's, and it still expands even beyond that. So you're talking about uh, uh, right, constant growth. You know what I'm saying? And you know the number seven plus six. You know what I'm saying? The number the number seven plus six comes up to number thirteen, which symbolizes um, a new beginning. So it's constantly growing, constantly expanding. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how the mind's supposed to be. You're not supposed to be putting, um, like we said earlier today, you can't um, circumscribe God, attempt to put God um, in a box and then circumscribe God's um, consciousness, you know what I'm saying, or God's knowledge, you know what I'm saying. You can't put, you can't state that, um, that well, you know, 
uh, one second you stating, well, God is everywhere, all the, um, he's in all things, he's uh, uh, everywhere. And then you say, well, my God this, you know what I'm saying, and uh, my God don't, uh, don't like this um, God or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? You just attempted to circumscribe God, you know what I'm saying? Uh, put God into a box and therefore you you just made God limit you mm. put a limit on God and God is limitless okay so the thing is that as long as you think God is limitless then guess what you gonna be limitless Bingo, you be limitless <laughs> all right with you saying that brother now once again I said the people who watch the secret they're watching it from a mundane level right now they want to know and several of them ask me now, if you are making or breaking your own destiny, if you decide what's going to happen in your life based upon your own individual thought, then where does God fit into the equation if you're deciding whether you're going to be excess, a success or you're going to be a failure? Then where does God fit into that particular equation? Well, when you go to... The 101 questionnaire for Moorish Americans, which was originally for Moorish children, um, written, well, you know, written by supposed Noble Ali. He states in there, um, where is Allah, basically, you know what I'm saying? And Allah is in man. Mm -hmm. So if you overstand, understand, understand that God, Allah, or whatever term that you would want to call it, it, her, he, exists within you mm -hmm. okay so you so say look with it within you you have no choice because mm -hmm. these are the um this is what they was telling you on is that that those are the individuals who become the most powerful individuals on the planet mm -hmm. of those who realize that god is within them god is within you. a law in man mm -hmm. all right arm leg leg arm supreme head mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying a r i mean a l l a h a law mm -hmm. okay so when you realize that and that this is Solomon's temple, that this is the temple in which that God made, you know mm. what I'm saying? God doesn't make temples um, with, um, 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 with human hands. Yeah. God made the temple which that he resides in, which is the physical body. Mm. This is seen within 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the, through the, um, on the third um, chapter, 16 verse, that speaks about, do ye not know that ye are the temple of God? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's it right there. That ye are, you are the temple of God. Yeah. And when you realize that, then you can begin to um, bring about change. Not, mm -hmm. until, not until you realize that, though. Mm -hmm. Because if you notice, majority of people who don't realize God exists within them and they're worshiping something outside of themselves, they're giving all of their energy to something external in which that is being utilized by beings, you know what I'm saying? Um, in which that we would call um, who is connected to the reptilians. Or who have that reptilian activation of their um, of their brainstem? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, they're the ones who are utilizing the, um, the, those um, powers in which that the people are releasing, and they're casting a spell or blanket. You know what I'm saying? Over the masses. You know what I'm saying? I think Dr. Malachi used to um, um, Ill used to call it back in the days the spell of Kingu mm. or the spell of Leviathan. You know what I'm saying? But all of that is real. This is the this is the spell in which that these um, that these individuals are working on, these so-called um, Satanism. I'm mm -hmm. saying this. Now, the reason why I ask that, where does God fit in the equation? Because if you ever watch, you heard of Creflo Dollar before, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, Creflo Dollar. Yeah, yeah creep low with your dollar. <laughs> <laughs> or, or as, as Arias said, create a flow of dollars. Right. Uh, he teaches the secret. He teaches the secret. He teaches prosperity. <laughs> And he also teaches the law of attraction. But, and I got his books in my library. But, and I say but, he throws a twist on it. He, Because he's smart. He realizes and he recognizes the law of attraction. But he throws a twist on it. And he says, he says exactly what the secret says. But he says, but, you have to give to the church. You have to tithe. You have to give back money. And if you do this, along with everything else you're doing that they tell you to do in the secret, mm -hmm. you will get it back in return. Mm -hmm. And now what he's doing with that is, he's programming your mind. You're telling yourself, I will be blessed. I will, you know, I will be prosperous. 
but I have to give the, I have to give such and such to the church. I have to give such and such to Creflo Dollar. And you know what? You create that reality in your life. Because you ultimately create your reality. And he realizes the cosmic laws and he take it and he takes advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that some messed up stuff? Well let me tell you, I know Creflo Dollar um, um, um definitely have studied um, um Bobby Hemmett's work as well as some of the other Bobby books. Hemmett. He had to. Because okay. the fact is is that um ten years ago Creflo Dollar wasn't saying any of this information that he's saying now. Yeah. That God exists within. He was not saying any of this thing. Mm. Um so I mean somewhere down the line, somebody who was um was a metaphysician and I say Bobby because Bobby and him is both in the same city, Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. That, oh. um, he had to have come across um that <laughs> so, type of yeah. information. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Somewhere over the last 10 years, he have come across metaphysical information and now he is taken into the ministries, which is good. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that he has told people and people are realizing that God exists within themselves. Of course, Christians have not done that um, um, in many centuries. Okay? Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is like you said, the twist, which is the titan. Wow. Well, what he don't tell the them twist. is that the titan is not just giving back a tenth of all that you have back to the church. Yeah. Now that can't be the case because guess what? Um, if you're receiving something, you know, you're being rendered a service, then you should, you know what I'm saying, give something back. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily have to be money. Mm -hmm. It can be your time. Mm -hmm. It can be your efforts. It can mm -hmm. be your intentions. Mm -hmm. It can be your meditations, your prayers. And that's what he's not telling them. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? The sound of healing or, um, or, the, uh, or the power of sound is just um, um, as um, good as that, you know, as that um, as those fiat notes or those FNRs in which that they have in their pocket, which is federal notes. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying um, from the reserve, they, they uh, federal reserve notes or FRNs. You know, what I'm saying they they just as good. You know, what I'm saying um, um, the power the the power of sound is even better. You know what I'm saying? Because it can produce, produce a healing effect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Them, um, the um, the, the power of sound, you said. Right. The fiat notes can. Mm. <laughs> you know and, what I'm saying? And that's what they're doing in church. <laughs> yeah. I mean, go think about it. They say that the fiat note is what they call it. Um, the fiat notes, they call it currency. But yet, it's okay. not backed by silver or gold. Yeah. In order for it to be a conductor, it had to be backed by some type of, um, um, you know, Silver, gold, or what? Or conductors of yeah. electromagnetic properties. Mm -hmm. So that means that's current. Mm -hmm. But um, remember, money isn't backed by silver or gold. It's worthless. Matter of fact, um, it takes 25 cents to produce um, um, all the bills in which that they get from the um, Federal Reserve Bank. Whether mm -hmm. it be a $1 bill, $2 bill, $5 bill, $10, $20, mm -hmm. um, $50, 100 thousand mm. dollar bill all of it costs 25 cents for, um, um to make for each one Damn. so that means um mm. we will be in perpetual debt you know what i'm saying um irregardless mm. you know what i'm saying so actually money doesn't even produce a currency you know what i'm saying but sound does so sound um is even greater than currency mm. um or better that's than that deep. currency anyway. that's deep but see he's not telling them that part yeah you know what i'm saying that they can give back the power you know what I'm saying? In order to bring forth a resurrection through sound instead of just through the currency. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's deep right there. Mm -hmm. Now, since you mentioned Bobby Hemmett, I got this tape with Brother Bobby Hemmett. Mm hmm Where it's sort of like I the law of attraction states that you uh let's just say you make or break your destiny. Then we got what Western civilization calls karma. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you do something, let's say uh, you steal from a store. You go to the corner store right now, you steal from it, mm -hmm. you're going to be punished for it. Mm -hmm. But the law of attraction states, if your mind says, and if you think you will be punished for it, you will be punished for it. But if I don't think I will be punished for it, then I won't be punished for it. And I want to get into a quick clip on what Bobby Hemmett had to say on karma, uh, being that you just mentioned him. And then we're going to get right back to the tape. You're going to let me know what you think about that. Mm -hmm. And then just tell me how that correlates with the law of attraction. Because a lot of people seem to think that the law of attraction cancels out what Western society looks at as karma. Whereas what Bobby says, if you step on a roach, you're going to be punished for it. 
You can't do nothing. You just got to sit still, be quiet, and shut the hell up. So we're going to look at a clip of Bobby. Then we're going to come back. You're going to compare the law of attraction with the law of karma. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. The karma that most people are aware of, I'll just pass it. Most people are aware of. The karma that most people are aware of mm -hmm. is a much more personal concept or an individual concept that's blown out of proportion. Okay. Obviously, it can't be no universal thing because the right boy didn't witness because if there was anything such as karma, he should have been off the planet. Right. Right. We're gonna find over every damn now that lets you know that obviously, right, right, obviously this right. world, right. this thing that you call karma, right. doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. Cause he, he would say, look, I have done everything on this planet, in which you consider say it is karma, which is nothing but um the East Indian word for sin. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've done everything that the Bible ever law known to man that I should have been out this motherfucker. If it was based on your reap what you sow. Right, right. Well, they, well the karma must love him because they sure got a long time coming when they come to him. Mm -hmm. This is the problem. The karma that they were talking about mm -hmm. had two aspects to it. It was an individual thing that you create in your own self based on your heart. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it has the interaction with your soul and its relationship to the world around it and how you create your own reality based on what you do, a series of things that you do that lines up with your soul and where your soul is. You understand where I'm coming from? But this whole concept, so they took an a, a individual concept of you mastering your own domain, domain and turn it into a universal concept that if I step on this roof, I'm going to have karma. Mm -hmm. So they made it a damn thing. Mm -hmm. So what happened here is you've got to understand the difference here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. By the time it gets to the Buddhists mm -hmm. or the Tibetans, mm -hmm. they are separated from the original Vedic system by thousands and thousands of years. And although it can be two, three thousand years ago that these concepts got blown away, it's still a late concept and a degraded concept compared to the original inception of this shit. And so we're looking back to something that's 2,000 years old and going, well, it must be the truth because it's old. No, that's young. It might be old to you, but uh, compared to the original concept, it was separated down in 10,000 years. So that means it's a degraded form that got out of hand and stuff. So by the time the Buddhists come, they are separated from the original concept down there 10,000 years. Because the original one come, is Kush out to come out of Ethiopia, but even when it started that particular land of India, it was thousands and thousands of years before the time you get the Buddhist concept that this is nothing but their form of fundamentalism, moralism. So they took these, this, this, this individual concept of something highly metaphysical that the cause and effect of your own self and put it on this shit as a, as a universal thing mm -hmm. of karma like sin. Yeah, right. And this shit is fake. Uh, it doesn't exist. Uh, thank, you. thank you. And it only exists on the individual level. You make that. But on the other hand, if you are aware of it and simply understand that you have the choice to say there ain't no karma and by you being the god of that, guess what? The cause and effect don't apply to you. Right. You care who the hell you want. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's all based on mm. what you're programmed to do. Now, if you're programmed that this thing is going to be detrimental to you, then guess what? Your soul and your subconscious mind acts upon it, and so therefore, you have sin. You have this karma on you. But if you don't have those particular concepts, because you know the higher truth, then you understand it and actually it don't apply to you. So in so many words, going back, there's the Demiurge crew mm -hmm. that run a room with a tight fist. And what they have done is they've gone in and they have lied. All right, Brother Ali, both of us just seen a clip of Bobby Hammond. We, he's basically breaking down karma from a... Uh, 
a from, perspective from the, real, from the real perspective from the real perspective you say the reality okay now karma and law of attraction it kind of collides with each other that's why i showed you that clip because either you make or break your destiny or you as do you see fit as being god Ooh. Uh, now br br break that down just go ahead go what bobby it. said was yeah. basically that karma is based on the perception in which that you was being indoctrinated with uh -huh. From childhood. From childhood. If you was not indoctrinated with those mentalities uh -huh. and that type of philosophies and ideologies, then guess what? That does not apply to you. Woo. So therefore, as being God and as you knowing that God exists within you and you being God and tapping into that God portion of yourself, that God power or force, uh -huh. then you can change your destiny based on the way that you see fit without mm. having the guilt in which the majority of people on this planet begin to... Um, resonate within their various chakras because that's mm. what the chakras levels are a resonance of, um, of, of those past guilt feelings like for example we know for sure that the organs store up certain um, 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 metaphysical um, 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 elements mm. like for example the liver stores up anger anger okay um, yeah, the lungs um, 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 do disappointment and depression mm. um, the genitalia rejection mm. the, what about heart, the, the heart the um, heart hatred the kidneys and the adrenal glands, fear. Fear. The um, brain, stress. Stress. You know what I'm saying? All of these metaphysical things leads to your death. Mm. And to the fact of you storing up these various emotions within these organs. Brother Ali, very simple question before you continue. Yes. A lot of people may not know this. Um, just briefly break what is metaphysics to the people who just watch the secret right. they jump into this tape right. they haven't seen you they haven't seen bobby they haven't seen phil they haven't seen delbert blair they haven't seen um none of y'all right. well, just, just briefly said, what you you was talking about metaphysics you, you just you tell just them briefly it. yeah uh, uh, and they jump into yeah. it and they jump into it mm. that's it that's metaphysics they have jumped into it mm. something that they are not totally aware of but is dealing with a mental aspect mm. so Mental or uh, meta mental physics deals with the mind. It deals with the in order to make um, um, the mind goes beyond leaps and bounds in which that it had prior subscribed a particular condition. Mm. So now at one time I seen life as just from a Christian point of view. I was a sinner. I need to repent. Oh my Lord, I need to um, ask white Jesus on the wall here <laughs> who looks like a little faggot for, for, um, for mercy and forgiveness because yeah. he's now known as the Son of God. But then um, in one church, now he's the Son of God. He is now God, you know what I'm saying, incarnated. Yeah. And, um, you know, and if I don't ask for him for forgiveness, then I won't have my slate on my slate right clean and I'll go to hell. <laughs> yeah. We all been in that Christian mentality state because that's what we grew up here within the so-called Christian society. Yeah. Which we know is corrupt as hell. I don't even have to go into that part. Yeah. But the fact is, is that we have ingrained within our subconscious that mentality. It's now that mentality in which that has to be eradicated mm. because that's part of the Willie Lynn syndrome. That's part of mentalized. That's part of um, psychological damage. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is, that's the that's breaking the chains of slavery. Mm -hmm. You know that we now must do. You know what I'm saying? So the, everything that we talking about deals with you breaking the confines of prior perceptions. Mm -hmm. And that's metaphysics. Metaphysics that make you go um, into what they call quantum physics now. The jump beyond the physical. Mm -hmm. The mental goes beyond the physical. Beyond because the it's physical. mind over matter. Mind over matter. Exactly. So that's, that's metaphysics. Okay. That's deep right there, brother. Now, I heard you on a pre you know now, now, now you're jumping to metaphysics here. I heard you on a previous tape with the brother Saad Nana. You did a tape called uh, Cultivating Male and Female Sexual Energy. Where you went into sex. And you went into how during sex your thoughts are the most potent. And as we just been talking about for the past 30 minutes, mm -hmm. your thoughts create your reality. So explain to the people briefly the thoughts during the whole sexual process and how can that be, why, why does that make it the most potent? Well, we're going to have to give um, the awareness of this Western information now coming from the Orient 
uh, what they would say call, call it, um, coming from the um, from India as they are the um, gatekeepers of that particular information. They're the ones in which that preserve that info. It's our info coming from out of the ancient mystery school system mm. of Egypt, of Kimmy, mm. um, or Tamaray, in which that of going out um, through the various um, um, diasporas into the other countries in which that they preserved our teachings for us until it was time for us to wake up and then we can come back and gather those pieces of the puzzle together again. Um, so we give thanks to um, um, the ancestors for doing so and we give yes. thanks to those who have kept um, the information for us in this mm -hmm. day and time. Those yes. who are now practitioners of the yogi teachings of the Tantra Kriya Yoga, of Kriya Yoga, of Kundalini Yoga, um, of Hatha Yoga, we give thanks. Definitely. Those of um, the Tao um, 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 teachings, uh, those are the Tibetan teachings, mm. those are the Buddhist teachings, um, we give thanks. Yes. So, uh, but we're now coming forth and regathering our information in order to um, um, bring this ancient mystery school back to, into a oneness, into a whole once again. Um, when you look at it, you got to look at it from the um, from that type of um, manner. If not, uh, uh, everything which that you do is going to be for naught because you have to know where the source of that information comes from. Bobby just told us on it is um, Kushite, mm -hmm. all right, um, or, or which they misnomer Ethiopian. You know what I'm saying, which is a Greek term, which means burnt face. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it is Kushite um, um, committing information. That's the origin of this. You know what I'm saying, of all of the info as far as um, um, all the monotheistic religions. And um, matter of fact, all of the religions in the world comes from out of um, ancient Kemet. Um, matter of mm -hmm. fact, check, um, check into Diop or Diop um, in his book on um, um, the origin of African civilization. He, he makes mention of the fact is that around 500 um, BC, there was a diaspora of priests from out of ancient Kemet and they went into the world and then you find the religion of Zoroastrianism, the religion of Buddhism, the religion mm. of um, Shintoism, the religion of Jainism, the religion of, um, of, um, of um, Judaism um, coming to the forefront. All the religion, of the ancient Kemet. All of it at the ancient Kemet. Mm. And Shik at the deal um, um, said this um, in that book, Historic Origin of, um, of um, Civilization. Damn. African um, civilization. Yeah. Damn, that's deep. Now, the people want to know, brother Aline, what factors. Now, you mentioned, I think you mentioned the liver. Mm -hmm. And you associated, was it the liver with stress? No, the anger. liver is, is um, anger. anger. Now, right. where does stress play a factor? Because right. the reason right. why I ask that, let me finish mm -hmm. this. The people want to know what factors do stress play on your mind? And what manifests because a lot of people they want certain things to manifest but because of the society we live in brother it's pretty stressful mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they come home from work they got to deal with the everyday pressures of bills That's it's, it, it, it's stressful right well, well you got to realize what they have to realize too is that you have to set aside at least 10 minutes of time a day for yourself 10 minutes a day, you say? At least. At least. Yeah, that's, that's the least. That you hear that? At least. Um, you have to set, like, set aside at least 10 minutes a day mm. um, in order to get back in tune with yourself. Whether it's um, if you have to go to the bathroom in, in order to seek a refuge or peace. Or either, um, as the Christians would say back in the days, you, know, you, go, you get in your um, secret closet. You know what I'm mm. saying? I ain't talking about R. Kelly closet. <laughs> out the closet. I'm talking about the closet. Up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, but we're talking about the closet in which that you're talking about where you can get somewhere alone and have a peace of mind and begin to think about um, your activities and what you want for yourself. That's the only way in which that they're going to be able to manifest. If you just think about it, you know what I'm saying, one day and you're not holding on to that thought and yeah. you're just going through your life and just, the only thing you did was just embed a subconscious thought there which can come about or cannot come about. Yeah. But when you want it to actually come about, you keep it there. You think about it several times a day mm. all right you can light candles you can do what's called candle magic you candle know magic right this called this correlates to the sex magic which that was going into on the prior um question, question which that yeah. we was getting ready to deal with um pascal beverly randolph mm. who was the supreme grand master of all the rosicrucians in the world mm. um um he is the one who brought the so-called um, um kriya yoga of sexual magic here to the western hemisphere all right, and he's the one in which that basically was telling us that when two people get together, male mm. and female, because they represent the electro, um, male represents electric. positive or electric, woman represents Man. magnetic negative. When these two poles come together, they can produce, um, um, they both um, symbolizes polarity. 
but mm. it can produce the oneness mm -hmm. or the balance in that polarity. Mm. Okay? Because you know that polarity is the same way. It's the same mm -hmm. same, same pole, thing, same pole, yeah. same angle, just but just different. two different ends. All right, or two different degrees of manifestation, mm -hmm. but they still the oneness is there. Mm -hmm. So that oneness is brought into balance. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that he states that when you circulate this energy through yourself, mm -hmm. which we call it now within um, um, the, um, the teachings of um, Taoism, um, um, it states that it's called microcosmic orbit. You can get a lot of information on that um, through. Um, Man, Ta Chia. Okay. Um, all of his books, which that he has out now, which is about maybe about shoot damn near fifteen of them. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, he got them all out now. Um, one of the best ones probably uh, what was that sexual reflexology. That's that's very powerful. Um, and he speaks about the uh, microcosmic orbit there. You can also get um, um, Grandmaster Sir Swati's um, book, Jewel in the Lotus. You know, mm. that's actually was the um, one of the best books that I've ever read um, back in '91 on the sexual um, um, sciences. Um, but the thing is, is that when the male and female get together, they circulate the energy up and down, called microcosmic orbit. It's, it's called the Aurora Boreas, which is the serpent biting its tail. But mm. energy circulates, mm. and as it circulates, the woman and the male becomes more in tune with each other and becomes mm. one field. Mm -hmm. As the energy becomes one feel, it becomes one mind. Mm -hmm. If they can both think mm -hmm. within that sphere of what they want, mm -hmm. whether it be a house, car, whether it be um, um, children, mm -hmm. whether it be um, uh, uh, anything in dealing from the mundane to the astral mm -hmm. to the spiritual, mm -hmm. all right? If they can think of together, mm -hmm. then guess what? That one field of astral energy in which that you have just accumulated mm. will work actively for you mm. from the subconscious realm into the superconscious realm mm. into the magnetic unconscious um, realm into the infinite conscious realm. Mm. In other so, words, it would tap into, um, in particular, the superconscious um, um, realm in which that brings about um, the manifestation much more quicker than just the subconscious. Okay, that that's the question I was going to ask. So you're saying that's going to make it manifest much quicker. Right. If you're both on the same page, thinking the same thing, right. at that particular time, you just brought two heads together. Yeah, you're bringing the electric and you're bringing the magnetic together right. Right. at the same time. And this is something everybody does. So right. it's something very important. It's nothing to look at as being perverted or anything right. like that as Western civilization has taught you. You're saying when you bring the electric and the magnetic together, in that particular time, in that particular time of being sex scientifically, and your thoughts are on the same page, right. you're gonna manifest that thought that much quicker. Right. So that goes even above the degree of the secret which they didn't even get into. Way above, you say. Sexual magic. So you you got right. You dealing with sexual magic now. Right. Right. That's that's above the secret. The secret mm -hmm. is just saying for the individual to keep the those individual type of thoughts. But in order for it to manifest at a much quicker, um, quicker rate. The sexual aspect have to be incorporated into it. Mm. And that's just the information that they want. Now, why is that? Because we we electromagnetic beings. We are electromagnetic beings ourselves. However, uh -huh. together we represent two ends. Uh -huh. The male is predominantly electrical. Uh -huh. The woman is predominantly uh, magnetic. magnetic. Yeah. So when we come together, we combine both of those fields. Even though individually we are electromagnetic beings within uh, singular or individually. Yeah. But together we produce a greater feel. Yeah. Damn, that's deep. You 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 you're dealing with some sex magic there. Now, one of the, uh, a couple of the questions the brother had, uh, a couple of the brothers had for me, and even a question I think about. Now, can drugs strengthen your thoughts? And now the reason why I ask that. Even with me, I drink occasionally, <laughs> you know, and the brothers, you know, they wanted to know. Right. Now, when you drink, mm -hmm. I'm saying from my perspective, yeah, brother, yeah, from your perspective. it brings more emotion right, to what you're saying. And what they're talking about with the secret, they saying your emotion fuels your thoughts. Right. Your emotion brings more strength. Mm -hmm. The more emotional you get with what you're saying and what you're thinking, the more strength you give those thoughts. And the more 
or feeling that you give out. You yeah. Know, that so, 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 so now the question is, brother, mm -hmm. drugs. What impact? We know impact. We, we know what impact it has on us physically, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about as far as our thoughts and mm -hmm. us manifesting them thoughts at a faster rate. Not trying to get nobody hooked or nothing, <laughs> but what role, positive or negative, does drugs have? Whatever drugs it may be that mm -hmm. you, you come <laughs> to your mind, what role does it have on our thoughts, brother? Well, um, basically, I mean, drugs has been used in all rituals and ceremonies throughout all civilizations. Okay. I mean, you can go back to the Gnostics who used to use shrooms or what they call yeah. mushrooms. Yeah, give an example. Um, you said the Gnostics? The Gnostics, right. Okay. Or, or actually, or the Essenians, mm. or the Therapeutics, which was actually um, the group in which they claim or allegedly claimed that Jesus was part of. Oh, John Jesus. That, 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 oh. Um, that um, John the Baptist supposedly was part of. I say yeah. allegedly because, um, truthfully, um, we know that there's been many Jesuses who come upon the scene. Don't say that. Um, um, matter of fact, <laughs> we um, um, found out at least 14 of them, um, according to Josephus, who was the first historian actually under the disguise of Arias Pisos. Yeah. That was his disguise. Yeah. Um, but you can go and check Arias Pisos, who's a Roman aristocrat, who actually ended up writing the majority of what we call now the New Testament. Um, so therefore, Jesus could be seen as a mythological, allegorical um, person in which that symbolizes the initiation in which that all of us must go through as physical beings into a higher consciousness. Or either you can see um, Jesus as a physical being um, in which that um, the Bible um, um, states his description in which that he had hair like lamb's wool, um, feet of brass as if it yeah. burnt in the furnace, um, a voice of many waters, meaning that he sounded like Barry White. Oh, sure, you're right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And his eyes as a flame of fire. All right, we know that there's only one group of per people or beings on this planet that have those descriptions, and that are melanated beings. Yeah. So, therefore, if you want to see Jesus as, um, um, as a physical being, you still have to see Jesus as a group of beings. Yeah. Okay? Or, or as Dr. York would say, um, new beings, or uh, new beings. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's deep. Mushrooms. Well, that goes back to, oh. to the whole joint. Um, as far as them taking it. If you go yeah. to Africa, I mean, shoot, um, brother was talking about um, um, what they call, what, ganja? You know what I'm saying? They, um, they you know, smoke that. You um, know that, um, that the um, Native Americans smoke tobacco. That's where they got the um, um the cigarettes um, I, um idea from. Okay. Um, right. Um, um. They also Native Americans also smoke um um hemp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, cousin uh, uh, or either um um what they call marijuana. You know what I'm so for rituals. So I mean. It, so does it? Does it or doesn't it alter your emotions and your it thoughts? It alters. It alters. It, it alters your um perception. Your yeah, conscious perception. level. Yeah. Okay. Your consciousness. Oh. Um. But it has to be used in moderation. It has to be used properly in the ceremony or ritual wow. um, setting. In other words, yes, in a certain setting, right? Yes. It had to be with the intention of you actually going into um, getting something accomplished, mm. not just okay. going in for okay. a um, social um, um, event. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, 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 matter of fact, there is a drug in which that um, actually what they call a drug actually it's not. It's a plant. It's a herb mm. um, coming from West Africa. Um, it's called the in um, the Tabernathi Ibuka plant. Yeah. It is seventy times more potent than marijuana. Damn. Um, um you can make this into a tea and drink it. Mm. After you drink about a cup, cup and a half, or maybe two cups, ten, be, um, depending on your uh, on your weight size, on your weight. Mm. Um, you will have an out of body experience. Damn. So, so I mean, don't tell the brothers that. Oh yeah, well I, mean, I got to tell them. Um, so we're talking about something which that is um. Um, you know what I'm saying, very powerful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the, the herbs can be utilized in order to um, reach certain levels, but it should be depended on in order to do so. Yeah. It can be utilized, you know what I'm saying, but not dependent upon. In other mm. words, you can use it in order to get there, but you continue concentrating yourself, meditating yourself, praying yourself to those um, various levels through um, sounds of healing, through various other um, techniques such as Qigong, Tai Chi, mm. Reiki healing energies, those energies are more purified um, because they don't um, bring about um, just altering perception. It, um, they actually bring about a spiritual healing and, a, and, um, and an enhanced spiritual condition. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Aline, 
A lot of people come to me when we talk about the secret. And um, I tell them it's almost like, like my, uh, my, my, my girl, she called me the other day. She said, what you doing? I said, I'm filming a movie. She said, what you mean you filming a movie? I said, I'm filming a, mo a movie called Life. I gotta go, I'm gonna call you back later. And I was in like deep meditation. And what I meant by that, I was saying that I'm filming because it's like what we just said, uh, life is like you're creating, your future is your present. You're creating your future and your present every second of every minute of every hour, of every day. So you're constantly creating your future with your thoughts. So when I said I was filming, I meant I was creating my future yeah. in my present. Yeah. And I told her, I was like, listen, I'm Spike Lee. I said, just think of me as Spike Lee. I'm Spike Lee and I'm filming a movie and I gotta cut and I gotta edit certain parts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gotta edit certain parts out. So certain parts don't get seen, cause I don't want I don't want it to be a scary movie in this exactly. mother. You know, exactly. you know what I'm saying? They transform the damn nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah. I don't want it to be no Freddy Krueger out here. <laughs> so I was filming a movie, but I meant that symbolically. Like, listen, my I'm in my mind state right now. I'm uh, creating a re certain reality for myself, and um, I can't be interrupted. Because I'm filming and I don't want to have to make no cuts in no scenes. That's right. So with that being said, brother, and with us living in the residual outcome of our past thoughts, mm. this conversation right now, all right, check this out, y'all. Those out there in TV land, this conversation, I thought about this conversation with the brother Eileen for weeks probably a month I thought about this conversation I manifest it just came to the physical light right now as you're watching it just came to the physical light but it existed uh, days and months ago in the astral whatever plane you want to call it in the thought plane let's just say the thought plane it existed there weeks ago so what I'm saying is if what I created existed weeks ago, but it's just now manifesting in the physical right now, uh, Thursday, uh, March, March, what is this, first. March 1st? Right. Then, what, I mean, is there such thing, what is the difference between the past, because the future, I'm creating the future in my present, but when the present plays out, it's the past. <laughs> See, you know what I'm saying? That's what, that's why. So it's tricky. No, no, it's not because that's why you just refer to it as the now. The now. N O W is the now. Oh, okay. There is no such thing as past, present, or future. Ooh, explain it's that, just, please, brother. Just, explain it's that, it's please. Is a continuance of a timeline. That's it. All right, and actually, the timeline is not just linear. The timeline is circular. Spatial. It's like okay. Right. Because Western society teaches us that it's linear. No. That's mm. why. That's why within our culture. Um, um, of um, um, those who are melanized, we say you reap what you sow, which yeah. is karma. What goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. Karma. It goes back to karma again, which is actually the laws of attraction. Mm -hmm. If you believe that you put something out and that you get ready to receive something, then guess what? You will reap you what wanna, you sow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But see, the term karma, which is heru ma'at, mm -hmm. heru ma'at, heru ma'at is actually the black Madonna and Christ symbol. Mm. Or the sun and moon. Mm. I mean, or excuse me, um, on what they call now the um, the moon and the crescent, um, the crescent moon and the star, mm -hmm. which symbolizes the um, mother and child symbol. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That is um, Ma'at. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Which symbolizes also justice mm. or the law. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it all talks about the astrological components of astrology or yeah. astronomy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it's talking about. You know, so when they come back to the karma, you know what I'm saying, that's what they have to refer to. It's talking about the way that the sun travels um, um, through the 12 zodiac signs. And it, those zodiac signs, um, angles of light influences upon the physical body mm. as we are moving and rotating through 
the cosmos. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Damn, that's deep. Now, we about to take a break, Brother Alain. But before we take a break, the people know, majority of us know, I know you know, everybody basically in the metaphysical community knows about the law of attraction. It's a simple law, it's a mundane law, it's one of the laws you learn about when you first come into knowledge yourself. But yet, brothers are finding it hard to manifest what they want. Why is it so hard to follow the law and to make the law of attraction come true? I mean, we know it's true. I know you know. But often, we encounter things we don't want to encounter. We don't want to experience, and we're just waiting and waiting on something we want to happen. Why is it so hard to follow the law of attraction, the secret, as they call it, when we already know what it is? Well, there's barriers that you have to break through. Barriers? Yeah, yeah there's barriers. And mm -hmm. one of the most negative, well, one of the problems with trying to manifest what you want into existence, the fact is, is that this is a crystallized negative field around the planet around the planet right our thoughts when we resonate a thought the mm. thought goes into a particular data bank which is called um the, um, the morphogenics of yeah. the planet earth it goes into a, um, a fear yeah. or a spear i should say um, um what is called ionosphere yeah these these memories in um matter of fact this is what we go to after we leave the physical body as far as our memories yeah it goes back into this collection in which that helps the earth understand the beings in which that resonates here, being that we are called earthlings. Yeah. And so the earth needs to know what we think. Yeah. The majority of the people's thoughts on this planet are negative. Man. So therefore, you have a crystallized negative barrier that you have to break through as far as being an etheric being, mm -hmm. which means an astral or auric being, means that you have to um, this, you have to remove the debris in which that you have accumulated in your auric field of that negativity. Mm. Once that is done, then you have to open up a way in order to help cleanse as much of the negativity from around you mm. as much as possible. So therefore, you'll find that when you begin to go to the next level, you're going to find that there's going to be less and less friends. Oh, man. They don't want that, though. That's because they was the, um, part of that encryption or they part of that negativity in which that was around you that was stopping you yeah. or blocking you from your blessings. From your blessings. Right. Ooh. So when you go to the next level, they begin to weed themselves away from you. Yeah. They get angry at you and you won't talk to them no more or whatever the case may be. But that's a process in which that has to happen. That's because you ain't on the same frequency no There's more? There's no more frequency, right. That negativity um, in which that help or that binds you together is no longer there. Damn. So you now go on to the next level of consciousness or awareness and they can't handle your vibratory rate any longer. Because a lot of people, once they find knowledge yourself and they get into this type of information, mm -hmm. they start to lose their friends. Right. Yeah. It all happens all the, all time, the time, brother. To everybody. I, I, I ain't even talking about friends. I'm talking about family. Right. I'm talking about wives. Right. I'm talking about husbands. Right. People lose the people mm -hmm. who are they most close to mm -hmm. just because they become conscious. Right. Right. Not because they killed somebody. Yeah. Not because they stole right. or they broke a, they, they, they broke the law. Right. So but what, you, what you would consider, those are negatives, right? Yeah. So... It, it seems as if if you did those negative things, they'd be there right with you. Yeah. But you doing something positive, uh -huh. they know where to be shown. They know where to be found. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So that's the and so that's the key with that you must resonate on is that thought of positivity, and mm. you'll see how many individuals will move out of your way as you coming through. You know what I'm saying? Knocking down those barriers. Man, that's deep, brother. All right, we about to take a break, Brother Arlene. When we come back, we going to get into some more advanced metaphysical concepts. We're going to continue building, and it's going to get better and better. We'll see you all in a little while. What you think and what you feel and what manifests is always a match every single time. No exception. It's hard to swallow. But when we can begin to open ourselves up to that, the ramifications are awesome. 
it means that whatever thought has done in your life, it can be undone through a shift in your awareness. All right, brother, I mean, we just seen a clip from The Secret where it talks about what you think, brother, and what you feel is a perfect match all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, brother, we know that we try and we try and we try to think positive. But living in this society, brother, and I'm not saying me and you, but I'm saying just people in general. You come home from work, you got all types of bills to pay, brother. I mean, all types of bills. You can't live in an a apartment, a one-bedroom apartment in New York right now for less than damn near 1100 So people, they try to... People try to be positive. There's no doubt that everybody tries to be positive. So forget about your thoughts, create your reality. Everybody tries to be positive. Everybody knows that. But by the time you finish putting up with your bills and whatever else you got to put up with, the whatever else stress you got to put up with, I mean, what, what, what happens? Because that's your feeling right there. They say your feeling fuels your, your thoughts. And it enhances your thoughts. But by the time we finish with our day, we so tired, we so fatigued, we so stressed, we so mad, we so upset. We thinking how I'm going to pay this, how I'm going to pay that. I mean, how are how we going to use the secret, brother? How are we going to use the secret, brother? I mean, that's what the, that's what the people want to know. After all is said and done, and they got to pay this and they got to pay that. And they going through this sickness, they got to take a pill for this, they got to take a pill for that, they don't feel good, they got a headache, their kids is this, I mean, how they, how they going to use the secret, brother? All right. It's not as easy, it's not just we sit down for five hours a day, we think positive, and that's that. I um, mean, we got to deal with some realistic conditions in this, uh, in this Western society. Yeah. So how are we going to utilize this secret? To our best ability, brother Ali. Well, I mean, the point is, is that they taught us algebra. Algebra. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Remember, everything is mathematics. Yes. All right. Um, that means there's a formula to this. Mm -hmm. All right. And particularly, you'll find out is that when you have a negative thought, yeah. you must replace it with a positive thought. Yes. Which cancels it out. Then uh -huh. you add another positive thought in its place. Uh -huh. So as long as you are resonating in positivity, then guess what? That becomes entrained and embedded inside of the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Once that is ingrained inside of the subconscious mind, it's like a groove in a record. If y'all might remember the 45s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You take the needle, place it on the groove. You'll see it spiraling through the grooves. That's how your brain works. So the more that you can um, train your brain in that manner of going in a positive way, then guess what? It will begin to do nothing but positive in his thinking. In other words, all the negativity will begin to fall to the wayside. Once in a while, a negative thought might come popping up because you are in the environment in which that has been um, um, conditioned to negativity. Mm. Okay, But that's the first thing as an individual is to begin to replace those negative thoughts with positive thoughts. So mm. no, And correct yourself whenever a negative thought comes up. Whenever a negative thought, thought comes up, say... Yeah. Change it. You know Change what I'm saying? It. You can do it through affirmations, which is um, um which is um particular um words of prayer. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You can do the Lord's prayer, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil, for thine the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mm. You can use that prayer, the Lord's mm. prayer. You can use Psalms 23. You can use the various Psalms um, of the um, of the Bible. Matter of fact, Psalms 1 is good in order to um, destroy negativity in which that is around you. Mm. All right. So is Psalms 2. You know, Psalms 8 is good um, in order to enhance um, business and, um, and um, communication. You know what I'm saying? It goes through various levels. 
You know what I'm saying? The songs can be utilized in that way. So those are affirmations. Um, you can make up your own affirmations. You know, you can use the um, ancient command in Proverbs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, a good book in order to get on that is Muata Ashby's um, Egyptian Yoga. You know mm. what I'm saying? Volume 1 and okay. Volume 2. In which that you can utilize those affirmations from out of there. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, nuk puk nuk. You know what I'm saying? I am that which that I am. You know what I'm mm. saying? A new puk way, a new puk ra. You know mm. what I'm saying? Which means I am God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In other words, I am in God. God is in me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When you see God, you see me. When you see me, you see God. Mm. So it goes back to that same scenario. You know what I'm saying? Is that you acknowledging the fact that you have a portion of God within you and you're utilizing that portion to the highest degree. Not to the degree um, of the lower self, but to the degree of the higher self. Mm. Now, explain to me real quick, brother. Well, everything that you said, mm -hmm. explain to the people there's no such things as coincidences or accidents and tell them what is synchronicity so they can tie synchronicity into what's happening in their everyday life and get rid of the accidents and, oh, this just happened by coincidence. Oh, I, I just ran into this person by coincidence. Explain to them what coincidence is. Well, the word coincidence means two separate incidences happening yeah. um, simultaneously. Um, the point is, is that um, things happen for a reason. All right. When you go back to the um, to the scriptures, they say it's a time and place or a time and season for all things. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to cry. You know what I'm saying? There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time for um, peace, there's a time for war. So everything happens in its um, in, in its synchronicity. And the synchronicity deals with the fact of, like in the movie, when you go to the movie um, Matrix, um, I think it was volume two, when they go and meet um, the Merovingian. And uh, they talk to the Merovingian, it's um, Morpheus, Trinity, and Neo. And they get back on the um, elevator and Neo said, was it supposed to happen like that? And, you know, and Morpheus said it happened um, the only way that it could have happened, Neo. And, you know, and he was like, well, what you mean by that? You know what I'm saying? He said, um, he said, that didn't go right. You know what I'm saying? And Morpheus said, Neo, it wasn't the way it's supposed to have happened. And then, once again, you know, he still couldn't understand. Neo still couldn't understand what, what he meant by that. He said, Neo, we are still here. Meaning, you know what I'm saying, it could have not happened any other way. We're still here. In other words, we're still alive. We still have a chance in order to change, you know what I'm saying, any negativity or any negative thing that have happened in the past, we still have a chance in order to make right for the future because you're living in the present. But you have to get the mindset that you're living in the now, you know what I'm saying, in order to make those corrections. If you're trying to think about the future, you know yeah. what I'm saying, um, um, that's the timeline, you mm. know what I'm saying. Um, if you try to think about the past, that was a timeline, you know what I'm saying? But if you think about the now, you control both facets, past and present, you know what I'm saying? So think about the now. Right, by thinking about the now. You know yeah. Living the moment. Living the moment. Right, you know what I'm saying? You thinking about everything that you need to do right now at this right moment. Right now at this time. Right. At this minute. At this minute, at this moment, at this second, you know what I'm saying? That's second. That, that's how you live life. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You don't think about something... Um, just two or three weeks down the line, mm. you know what I'm saying? You thinking about what you can do right now, mm. and then two or three um, days down the line will work itself out based on the way that you just put forth a perception mm. in the now. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you don't think about what's coming down the line. You know mm. what I'm saying? You do what you need to do right now, and that's the part of the secret which they did um, explain. If you go mm. back to um, one of the guys on here, um, he was talking about the house. Yeah. I don't know if you remember about the guy in the house. He got his house. Right. Yeah. He said um, he was thinking about the house, you know what I'm saying? Prior to, he had the little picture up on the wall. He looked look at the picture or whatever. That was the now. Yeah. Remember, we said that the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between Swing. what's real and, and what's, what's not real. real. It, right. It, it doesn't know. So he's looking at the house and he's already thinking that he's in the house. Yeah. That, so he done placed himself in the now. Mm. So what happened? Through the subconscious. <laughs> Through the subconscious. So he's no longer 
thinking any longer about the house, he forgot about he it. Forgot it. But where did it get entrained at? Where did it get engrooved at? It was in the subconscious mm -hmm. mind, which yeah. was still reacting off of what you told it. Yeah. And he never changed it up, even though he might have consciously forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Subconsciously, it was still there. So next thing you know, he's picking up the picture again, and he's looking, God, this is the same damn house! <laughs> Why? So you see, so so that's 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 what we're talking about. So that's it. You think about it, you forget about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, matter of fact, that this is what they tell you when, um, when you learn the signs of candle magic. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cause candles symbolizes the different frequencies of the chakras. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, indigo, or um, violet, white, gold. You know what I'm saying? Represents yeah. those frequencies. So <clears throat> you can burn a candle based off the chakra frequency in order to bring about, like for example, if it's at the throat, communication. Yeah. If it's at the heart, love issues. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you got a pink candle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it's red, passion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it's nurturing, orange. Mm. If it's um yellow, intellect. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If it's indigo, spirituality. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If it's um white, um repelling of negativity. Yeah. If it's a black candle, absorption of negativity. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If it's um 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 gold healing mm. and protection. Mm. So the but, different but, colors but, of the um, of candles have a range of powers in which that it stems from your auric field. Cause guess what? When you touch something, it's just like psych chemistry in which that we were talking about um, um earlier today with Sarnetta. Um um when you touch something, you leave what's called an auric residue. Mm. So if you touch a candle in which that is based off the frequency in which that you're attempting to put, convey to it and put into it, which is what you're doing is putting energy into the candle so that the candle can burn off mm. the negative or the positive. Mm. And how you know this? Because when you look at the candle, the negative would be when it's burning black. Mm. The positive would be when it's burning on on white. Yeah. All right. Um, 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 depending on how high the flame is, if the uh, flame is real high, yeah. then it's burning off a lot of negativity and the candle would turn black. The mm. glass, if you have a seven day candle, if, yeah. it's, um, um, if it's burning real minute, you know what I'm saying, that means that it um, um, more than likely is getting ready to go out soon and that means that there's a lot of um, blockage um, um, on a particular thing that you want to bring into existence. Mm. So you can use sexual magic. You can use candle magic. These are just tools in which that you can utilize in order to bring what the secret is talking about mm. into quicker mm. fruition. Well, well, well the, the people they, they want to know about magic, I mean. Yeah. They want to know the, the 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 secret. They touch on rituals, I mean, in a real minute aspect as far as the dude had an altar where he had the exact house he visualized on the altar. But what rituals can people do? What I mean, what what can we do to bring this? You talk about manifesting what you want quicker. Tell us some rituals. I mean, some magic. I mean, even even if for the people that don't know what magic is, what can we do to manifest? Because the people we, 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 the people got a short attention span. Right. They want things to happen. <laughs> Right I there mean, and then. right there and then, but it doesn't happen that way. Nah, because we're in the third dimension. Because we we're in like the that. third dimension. See, they don't right. understand right. that. Right. Let me explain. What does that mean? We're in the third dimension. What does that mean with us being spiritual beings and us having these powers? Right. What does it mean us being trapped in the third dimension? All right. Um, we only trapped by our limitations of the mind. Yeah. The mind has given physical reality to a physical body or in a parent physical body for a certain time period. We are working within the laws of, of what they call um, magnetism. The physical body is based off of magnetism. <laughs> Centrifugal and sympathical force is what holds your physical body together, which is called push and pull. Mm. Yin and yang. Yeah. All right? This is, the, um, this is what holds the physical body together. So you talking about forces in which that you already have come up under, in which that you have to realize what they do in order to help your situation. Yin and yang, push and pull, which is centrifugal centrifugal force, um, is what they call gravity. Mm. Okay, so that means that you have to come up with a way in order to break through the threshold of what they call gravitational philosophy, mm. um, 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 philosophy, velocity. 
Mm. And when you, what happens is that you have to take your mind to such a high level, you know what I'm saying, that the mind now has rulership once again over the physical body, mm. over matter. Mm. But if you don't do that, then you will stay within the confines in which that the flesh, the cardinal being, um, the cardinal mind, um, which is the lower self, has the power over you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And as long as you stay in that mind state, then you're trapped within the third dimension and within its confines and within its reality which that is given you through your own perceptions and views. You're trapped there. And as long as you're trapped there, then guess what? You can't manifest what you really want into existence. Because what you want to do is bypass as much of the third dimension as possible and its limitations. Once mm -hmm. again, you don't want anything to circumscribe the power of God and which that resonates within you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been taught, was to, um, to put boundaries around God, to put God in the box. Mm -hmm. As long as you got wow. God in the box, God can't work for you. Mm. So, so, so scientifically speaking... And that's magic. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only magic there is. Making, so, God, making God limitless, everlasting, eternal, like the scriptures say that he is, or say that he, um, she is, or it is. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now... Scientifically speaking, how does a thought become a thing? Mm -hmm. Like we know, you think, all right, like I said earlier, you think positive, you know, you get positive results. Right. But scientifically speaking, I mean, we talking about, we, we're dealing with advanced concepts here, okay. y'all. We're not dealing with regular things you get in the secret. Gotcha. We're dealing with advanced concepts that explains scientifically that this is true not just this is not just inspiration or, or, or to motivate you we're dealing with a higher science something that explains this exists from a scientific perspective as well as an inspirational perspective it's not just to make you feel good this is to explain why this occurs on a scientific level because whether you realize it or not we are science we are science and we are spirit the brother Aline he's going to explain the science behind this that the secret did not explain so with that question brother why does a thought become a thing scientifically we understand the inspiration you think positive something positive is going to happen you think good good things are going to come to you that's great, brother. But scientifically, we want to get to the bottom of this. Why does that happen? What is the neurons, the frequencies? I mean, break it down to me, brother. Okay. All thoughts are things. Uh -huh. So, we can't see the thought. I can't see the transaction or, the, um, um, or, or you bringing the thought into existence for me looking at you. Only way I can really tell is from the expression on your face. Yeah. I will still have to ask you what the thought is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that thoughts are things and it has a physical expression. Within your mind, when the mind translates um, um, the thought into the brain, the brain reacts from it and produces a chemical response. Mm -hmm. So every thought has a chemical response in your cellular structure. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what that means is that there's um, endorphins, you know what I'm saying, in which that is um, enhanced or degraded. Now, what is endorphin? Endorphins you say? are of um, 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 brain hormones. In brain which that, hormones. Right, in which that helps um, from out the, um, 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 I guess you call it hypo, um, the hypothalamus area in the brain, mm -hmm. in which that is called the pleasure center of the brain. Mm -hmm. It deals with, um, with um, joy. Uh, uh, anger in all of those different areas, you know what I'm saying, mm. um, of the brain. That mm. is the actual um, location for your emotional um, senses, for your emotional centers, mm. okay, is that area. So when you're talking about um, the emotions, the desires, all of that ties back to that, all right? Then you got the mental aspect, which actually goes into um, the higher regions of the brain, which is the frontal lobe area, you know what I'm mm. saying? So the whole brain interacts. You know what I'm saying? In order to integrate um, the portions or the segments in which that we have broken off or fragmented and bring everything into a whole. The mind dictates to your conscious levels or what is called endocrine glands. 
you have seven endocrine glands in the body. You have your pineal gland, your pituitary gland, your, um, thy your thyroid glands, your thymus gland, your pancreas, spleen, um, your adrenal glands um, within the woman, um, the uterus and the ovaries within the male, the um, testes and the prostate. So these are what is called ductless glands in which that produces hormones within the body. Whenever the hormones is resonated from out of the brain, it is act as a step down transformer from the pineal gland to the rest of the endocrine gland system. Um, once the endocrine gland system um, has um, those particular um, balances of hormones in the body, then you can produce a chain reaction in which that is necessary in order to manifest what you want into existence. This is why the yogi teaches teach the science of chakra work and how to utilize chakra um, 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 power. For example, when you breathe in and out of a particular chakra, what you're doing is cleansing it. All right? And therefore, you're releasing the toxins and the poison from out of it and you're attempting to bring in new pranic energy or chi energy or ki energy into it. Therefore, you're storing um, 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 energy, astral energy, cosmic energy that you can utilize in order to bring what you need into existence. That's what we all have to do in order to, um, to take this um, secret thing to the next level. All right? So you have to do what is called chakra breathing. Mm. All right? um, how you would do that is um, sit with your back straight up, hands on your knees, and uh -huh. you can visualize um, um, the various areas that we just finished talking about, in particular the pineal gland. So yeah. you would think about energy coming in and out at the top of the head. So you would visualize you breathing in, as you breathe in, uh -huh. you will feel energy coming in at the top of the head. And then as you breathe out, energy leaving from out the top of the head. Uh -huh. That's how you cleanse the um, um, and balance each um, endocrine gland and chakra point. Mm. Because at the core of each of the um, so-called endocrine glands is a nestle of nerves, a cluster mm. of nerves. Mm. That nerve produces neurons, which is actually what produces a light frequency in which that in the orient they call it chakras which means a will within light color and sound in which mm. that produces light color and sound it's a will that actually rotates based on your conscious level either to the right or to the left mm. okay i don't want to go too far you know what i'm saying because we still ain't get to the advanced part yet but this is what we um have to do so next you would do the third eye you yeah. breathe into the third eye and out through the medulla oblongata breathe into the medulla oblongata and then out through the third eye Mm. Cleansing those, um, cleansing that pole. Mm. All right. Then you would go um, to the throat. You mm. know what I'm saying? Breathe in. As you breathe in through mm. the nose, you would breathe out through the nose, but then out through the um, particular organ um, or gland which that you have correlated to, which is now with the thyroid gland. Mm. Thyroid gland. Mm. Right. Then you through the um, thymus gland. Um, you would do the pancreas, um, the spleen, um, which helps with that whole area, the adrenal glands. You would do the navel um, area, mm. um, um, which deals with the um, within the male, the um, prostate gland. Um, you know what I'm saying? And then the testes. Um, you would do the breathing exercises from um, um, up and in through the testes or the perineum, mm. right? For the woman, through the um, navel or um, chakra into the um, uterus, and then through her vaginal canal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She would visualize breathing in and out through it. So it's the visualization technique of um, what cleansing out the auric field, mm. you know what I'm saying, through that manner, you know what I'm saying. So as you get rid of those toxins and poison that you have accumulated in debris of, of, um, of, um, of um, auric energy, you, you releasing it mm -hmm. and you bring it in new energy and releasing old energy, mm. you know what I'm saying. That's what your lungs do and that's what you must do for each of the organs in your body. Mm -hmm. So once you have accumulated enough um, auric um, um, astral energy, mm. you know what I'm saying, after you do the cleansing, um, the cleansing breath, now after you do that, now you can absorb energy. Mm. That's what melanin does anyway. Melanin mm. is an absorb, uh, um, um, what it does, it absorbs energy, it conducts energy, it transmits energy, and it receives energy. Mm. Alright, so now it's time for you to receive and absorb the energy now after you cleanse it. So now you begin to uh, visualize energy just coming into the top of the head, you know what I'm saying, um, you can store it in the third eye area, so you can visualize energy being stored here in the third eye. You can visualize energy being stored at the back of the heart. You can visualize mm. energy being stored at the solar plexus or either at the navel chakra. And you can store the energy in these particular locations. All right? 
The most known storage place for energy or pranic energy, chi energy, ki energy is the Dan Tian, which is the navel chakra or right below the navel chakra, about an inch and three inches, or one inch to three inches below. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that is where you would store the energy at. Mm. You know, so it, it, it goes deep. But the fact is, is that this is the energy that you're now going to use in order to bring about a, a, a actual physical manifestation. Mm -hmm. All right, you can't bring forth a physical manifestation with old ass energy. Mm -hmm. All right, this is what is meant in the Bible that um, you can put new wine in the old bag and the, and the damn old bag will burst. Yeah. Okay, you can't put new wine in the old bag. Yeah. This is one of the things that the um, damn secret did tell the people. You can damn um, attempt to change your thoughts, but if you haven't cleansed yourself of those old emotions and that and that baggage, um, you know I might remember um, um, Erica Badu's um, song called "Bag Lady." Bag Lady, yeah. She was talking about how um, um, each event, she was talking about a different woman and um, or a different person and how they store the, the emotional baggages inside of themselves. Uh -huh. Carrying that shit around yeah. and, and they dumping that shit off on on, on the brothers the or, brother, or, yeah. or vice versa on the brothers on to the sisters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's that you have to cleanse yourself from that emotional baggage. Then you can put new energy into a new vessel. But mm. you can't put new energy into an old vessel because that shit will burst. Mm. Fuck around and damn catch a heart attack or some shit. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, see that that's what they didn't tell you on the secret. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> now now we're saying what what you just said. Let's let's talk a little bit about diseases. Mm -hmm. Now we got all types I mean we got all types of diseases running around here now. Mm -hmm. You got cancer, you got AIDS. Which is anger. Cancer oh, is nothing about okay, anger. Okay, okay, let me yeah. let me just finish. Yeah. <laughs> We got uh, HIV. We got mm -hmm. we got all our black people on dialysis, mm -hmm. which is kidney failure, right, right. and that's a huge business. Big industry. Uh, I mean, yeah, huge industry. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on dialysis mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, you got everything out here. Mm -hmm. People taking pills. People got a cabinet full of pills. Mm -hmm. Love the pills. So I got a cabinet full of herbs. <laughs> With, 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 with that being said, with our people having a cabinet full of pills, mm -hmm. taking a pill for every particular reason known to man, mm -hmm. what are the causes for these for these diseases? Because some people say it's food. Does it start with food? Does it start, it start with, with the mind? It starts with your thoughts first. It starts with your thoughts. Ninety-nine percent. So explain it. Explain how it starts with your thoughts. Because we know what they're giving us as far as the food is garbage. Mm -hmm. We see it every day on the news. We see the, the Chinese restaurants mm -hmm. cooking mice and giving it to our people. We see, uh, I mean, all types of stuff on the news. You know. But explain how it starts with your thoughts. It then works its way down. It works its way in. Yes, right. yes. Um, your thoughts account for 99 percent. Um, 99 percent. 99 percent of um, of um. Matter of fact, your cellular structure, your atomic structure, is empty space. 99.9999 percent of it is empty space. So basically, what that means is that that space, um, um, um being that is empty or apparently empty, it actually is potential light. You have the ability in order to fill the um, um the atomic structure with light um, um with light codes. Um, matter of fact, your DNA, which is a um, giant molecule, is nothing but um a making of that light code. Mm -hmm. So you find out is that DNA um has um, um um a predisposition based on the thoughts of your mother and father and of their mother and father seven generations back on their mother and father's side. Um, of um, thoughts in which that is accumulated and in which that brought your physical being into existence. So you have to contend with the 46 um, 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 chromosome deposits from your mother and father and their mother and father generations in which that they gave you, you know what I'm saying, uh, um, 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 to manifest here. So the thing is, is that DNA plays a part in the way in which that you have a predisposition towards an illness or disease. So if you have, so-called, as they say, you have um, high blood pressure that runs through the family. All right, well guess what? That means that your family had a lot of hardships 
on a lot of um, 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 anger um, issues in which that they had to contend with, and you now are the physical bearer of that damn um, of that anger. So what you would want to do is the um, the set aside times in which that you have um, um, to make sure that you got the proper rest, make sure you get the proper um, water take um, taken. You know what I'm saying? And make sure that you are meditating at least 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes. Right, at least 20 minutes a day to wow. an hour. Yeah. Once you learn how to meditate at least 20 minutes to an um, hour a day, best believe you won't even have any um, high blood pressure any longer. Mm. All right, so bl high blood pressure comes from anger. You know what I'm saying? From madness in which has been stored up within the DNA, in which that give you as um, uh, it gives you the disposition in order to um, acquire it later on in life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, as you get older, you begin to see more hardships. That, um, that you are able to identify just like your ancestor was able to identify with and experience. So therefore, you bring it into fruition. Um, cancer is also another anger management um, um, dis-ease. Mm. Um, um, based on which element or uh, which organ in which that is depleted of energy, and this is why we talk about the chakra breathing breath, because you cleanse the toxins and the poison from the particular chakras or endocrine glands or organs, and what happened is that, like for example, the shh sound, which the area in which that stores anger in your body is the liver. Mm. So in order to release the anger from the liver before it begins to, um, to move the anger to the various places in which that becomes what? Deficient in energy. You must learn how to release it. So the sound in order to release the negative um, 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 or the anger is shh, the shh sound. So certain sounds releases right. certain sound. sounds releases um, 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 the tensions from the body. I'm gonna go into all of it in a second. That's just the first one. You take the R off the liver and you got the word what? Live. Live. Because it has over the liver itself has over 500 functions in your body. Mm. Your heart only has two to pump the blood to and fro. Mm. That's it. It's a pump. But the liver has over 500. You know what I'm saying? So we talking about um, um, the way in which that we um, put pressure um, on the liver. So the liver is what holds anger. So anytime that you have cancer or, um, or high blood pressure, the area that you must go to first is the liver in order to release that anger from that area and um, the sound is shh, which also correlates to what me and my wife were talking about earlier today, to the sound shit. <laughs> when you get upset and you and you hit something, you, know, you stomp your toe or whatever the case may be, and you just say, shit. you just feel like a good release, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, um, 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 of energy, you know what I'm saying, of negative energy, you know what I'm saying. So the shit sound helps, you know what I'm saying, with that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Next. You have your lungs. Remember, we said that your lungs store the de um, de um, depression mm. and disappointment. Yeah. All right. The sound of which that released the lungs is ah. Uh, uh -huh. uh, That's why people do that. Mm -hmm. They call it a sigh. Yeah. Well, that's a remedy. It's a what? A remedy. Remedy. Yeah. Uh. When when you a solution. Yeah. When you sigh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sighing um, 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 is like a release. You know what I'm saying? Just like crying is. Crying is a release mm. of emotional way. Blockage. Yeah. Well, sighing is a release of emotional blockage also. Mm. All right? When you want to release something, you know what I'm saying? It's just like a sigh is coincides with a sign mm. or a signature. Mm. All right? Each sound has a particular frequency as signature. Yeah. All right, so the sound for for the heart and for the lungs is oh. and by doing that um, several times a day, in particular at least seven times a day, um, you release that um, disappointment for the genitalia. Is the which remember we said the genitalia stores rejection, mm. so whenever you feel like. Um, 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 you you being oppressed or suppressed or depressed, you know what I'm saying? Like um, like, like like prostate or something. Like bingo. That. Yeah. When you feel like you just, um, that's 
with Minister Farrakhan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Him yeah. having these prostate issues comes yeah. from the fact that if he's feeling that he's helpless and hopeless. Mm. Even though he's one of the greatest, um, um, probably one of the greatest brothers on the planet as far as him being able to get forth a message to the masses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He still feels as if he hasn't done enough. Yeah. Mm. So therefore, in a sense, rejection um, sits in. And it sits in into that particular organ. So in order to release that energy from that organ, you the you sound. Mm -hmm. And the deeper that you can go with it or um, um do it, um it sounds just like a digi do. You know what I'm saying? Like You'll see a digital, um, digital, you know what I'm saying, which is a long instrument in which that um, you'll find in um, in Africa, in India, and in um, Australia. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So um, you want to make the U sound. Um, problems with. Um, so wait, wait. Let me, let me get one thing straight. Yeah, you saying certain emotions that people feel during the day, mm -hmm. whether it be fear, stress, mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. whatever. All of those particular emotions sit mm -hmm. in certain organs right. of your body, your body. and they eventually right. manifest mm -hmm. into what we call this ease. This That's, right. ease. Right. That's what you're saying. If you don't cleanse out, if right, if you don't cleanse it out, like what I'm talking about, yeah, right. Like for example, you just said fear. fear yeah, resides within the adrenal glands, which sits on top of the kidneys. What right. the Wonder why for such a high damn amount of damn own weight people on kidney dialysis yeah. because they have so much fear of living uh -huh. so the being afraid of life is what causes kidney problems mm. that's what's going on mm. they have a fear of living mm. they have a phobia of life mm. so therefore kidneys is what goes first when it's depleted of energy the adrenal glands which produces what adrenaline mm. what is adrenaline used for when you are away in a state of fear. Mm. So that means what is the sound which that helps in order to release that energy um, 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 of the adrenaline and get the adrenaline back into balance um, in which that it won't affect the adrenal glands and the kidneys in which that is, which is actually one and if you want to know the truth it's like basically almost one organ because they work off of each other in that manner and it represents the water um, 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 principle within the body. The water principles mean that you have to have on the accurate, on the on the on the appropriate amount of water um, intake of water. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So also um, um, the reason for fear is because people are dehydrated. Mm -hmm. All right. So in order to help with that, um, begin to take in at least a gallon of water a day, and then also do the particular sound of call. Now, what is that particular sound for, brother? K in for the adrenal glands and for the kidneys. For the kidneys, okay. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It helps heal that. Mm -hmm. All right. You can also use the O sound. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of people coming down with diabetes mm -hmm. because of the high fructose um, sugar within the um, majority of the drinks mm -hmm. um, um, and, um, and the sugar content. And the body not able to um, um, utilize the insulin properly because of such um, high amounts of sugar contents from the um, um, fuco, high fucose sugar that would be taken in from the um, soft drinks and from the sodas and things like that. Um, the sound in which that helps with the um, with this area once again is the same sound that we just finished talking about the ca sound um, and the um, o sound. And you can also do um, another sound which is oh. H A H um, mm. sound, mm -hmm. right? Um, heart, you know what I'm saying? Um, stores up hatred. The heart. Right, the heart. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, in order to release it, you go back to the oh, the same sound for depression and for mm. disappointment. Mm. It's the same sound for the lungs and the heart combined. 
both, as well as for hatred in the heart. Mm. All right. Um, the brain, we're talking about stress. All right. The I sound and the E sound. I. The E sound. And that's for stress. That's for stress to relieve the brain from the stressful situation. It releases the stress. Mm. As soon as you now, do it, you'll feel it. Now, 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 now. <clears throat> as far as scientifically speaking, mm -hmm. this I. Mm -hmm. How? What's the science behind this particular sound? If you notice the sounds in which I'm giving, all the vowels. Vowels. I, I was about to say that. <laughs> I was about to say that. The Remember vowels. the song about yeah. twenty years ago. I was about to say that. Remember the song twenty years ago? Um, um, it was, it was, it was like being. It, I think, shoot, I know I was up here in New York at that time. I know, I know, we damn well we played that song at least on um, two years straight. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, e, what is it? A, A, A E I O U U. <laughs> and sometimes why? Remember that joint? <laughs> yeah. Yo, we play that joint, I know, for almost two years straight up here in New York, yo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We gotta <coughs> give that damn song up. Yeah. The reason why? Because it was tapping into those frequencies. Uh, of those okay. Mm -hmm. So the vowels tapping, you're saying? It produces your soul urge. Mm. All right? Whenever you do numerology, um, whenever you're dealing with the vowels and numerology, that symbolizes your soul's your soul urge. urge. So whatever you're doing, even when you tap into the vowels, dealing yeah. with cleansing from the particular endocrine glands and organs, it deals with the purpose of the soul's urge. The soul's urge is for you to be immortal. immortal. Because the soul is immortal. The soul is immortal. Right. So you're that saying is the soul's that, urge. You're saying that whatever age you are... Right. And whatever age I am, I'm not that age. Mm -hmm. I'm immortal. Mm -hmm. I'm older than that, you're right. saying. Right. That's deep. That's deep. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. People think, let's say I'm 25, year old, 25 years old. A person would think, all right, I'm 25 years old. But you're saying the real you is way older than that. Mm -hmm. Explain that. Okay. Um... According to Honorable um, Elijah Muhammad, um, he states that our cream existed began 76 trillion years ago. Uh -huh. All right. We were talking about the universe earlier, and that's 76 quintillion mile, um, miles of diameter. Uh -huh. All right. Um, we want to set the record straight on that. But the 76 trillion years co correlates to Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in which that he was speaking about our cream essence of the soul coming into existence into this particular universe. Yeah. We existed prior to even this particular universe coming into existence of 76 trillion years ago. Mm. But yeah. in this particular universe, our cream existence is, um, is 76 trillion years. Mm. All right? So um, um, that's what we mean by uh, uh, the soul's urge. Because mm. the soul has one thing and one purpose and one thing only, and that's the two experience. Mm. That, that is God want to experience his creation, to mm -hmm. embed himself inside of his creation. Mm -hmm. What's the point of creating something that you can't damn become part of it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the people on the street want to know that, all right, we're talking about manifesting things we want to manifest. Mm -hmm. We're talking about bringing things in the light we want to bring in the light. Mm -hmm. Now, you got people on the street that's into Santa Rita. You got people that sent to all forms of magic. Mm -hmm. So what is this? I'm sorry about that, y'all. What is this that you will call voodoo, magic, uh, the different terms they have out there, Santeria? What is what? Are, what are they doing? Cause they doing something. To bring something into manifestation. Right. Let's say they want to be rich. They're going to do something that the average person doesn't do right. to become rich. Right. Now, what is it that they're doing? Is it working? And should we be doing that? Mick, um, you doing it now. What's your name? Rich. Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is, sound like you already attempted to do what? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? In yeah. other words, you have to change the paradigm. Okay. All right. 
You have already done it. You know what I'm saying? Rich is short for Richard. Yeah. Okay. Well, you shorten it because of the fact that now you want to exhibit what side? Finance. The finances. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we all must do. Mm. Whether we do it through a name change or through it a frequency change. Mm. Those brothers and sisters who practice Yoruba, Santeria, mm. Vudan, all of that. Um, yeah. um, 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 Akan, yeah. they're all practitioners of the power of the mind, Ori. So it's all the power of the mind. All the power of the mind. Now, the same now, thing that they speak on the secret is magic. That is magic, what they're mm -hmm. talking about. They're just not using the term magic because they don't want to spook um, niggas out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, 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 they get into the whole sacrificing animals, spilling blood, and all example. that. Are people, the people, the regular regular people don't understand that? No, no, they're not going to understand Now, that. now, what is, all right, we dealing with the mind, brother. Right. We dealing with the mind bringing things to existence. But when you go into sacrificing animals, you what you doing with that? I mean, we dealing with the mind. Why you, why you killing the animal and spilling blood? Talking about you going to do this and you going to do that. Because when you supposed to do that with the mind? I give you the, I give you the science. Go ahead. All right. Um, animals are physical things. Yeah. They express a life force in which that is as a connection to this earth. We all do. Yeah. However, they symbolize the lower self, the residual memory of the lower self. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's how the animals got here was from being brought down from out the fifth dimension down into physical incarnation as a residual process of our thoughts as the mm. mind began to physically produce the human body, to mm. manifest the human body, to um to um, gather the elements in order to um, put the human body together, mm. all right? The animals was already here um, um, as, that um, as that process began because they are the most dense portion of the earth. Mm. Now, blood symbolizes life. Mm. You go to the Bible, that's what it symbolizes, the life principle. Mm. The science is, is that the reason why the Yoruba, the Khan, the Vudan, and the Congo priests or those who practice Apollo or Mayombo or Mayombi is because of the simple fact is that they are attempting to manifest physical things here. Mm. So you lose you use the things of the lower self in order to manifest things um, that you need into the physical state. They understand that. It's mundane, but it's the level in which that they understand it to be. So mm. the animals correlate to the mundane things and the material things that you need in this world. Mm. So if you utilize the blood of a physical thing, you can bring forth the physical manifestation of a thing from the essence. Mm. Because we all return and go back to the essence. But if you can utilize a physical thing which symbolizes life, blood, and a tie to this um to the um to the earth itself, then you can bring forth this physical manifestation even quicker. It's a process in which that they've been knowing about um, for um, millions of years, that the Africans been knowing for millions of years. Okay? The thing is, is that it's not necessary in order to actually use the animals or to harm the animals in order to do so, mm -hmm. right? There's different ways that you can gather energy in order to bring about that physical manifestation. One, we already talked about, through the power of what? Sex. Mm -hmm. Sexual yeah. magic. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Also, two, we spoke about Qigong, mm -hmm. Tai Chi, yeah. Pranic healing, yeah. or, pranic, um, or what is called Pranayama. Kundalini yeah. Yoga, mm. and with that you begin to um, awake you, and with that you begin to absorb all of these frequencies and codes, light codes, into your physical body and store them in those particular areas that I made mention of earlier. Mm. All right, and you can utilize that energy as a sacrifice instead of utilizing the life force of an animal as a sacrifice. Mm. Either way, you sacrifice something. Something. So, you know, the problem is either it's going to be your life force or it's going to be the animal's life force. Mm. The reason why they utilize the animal life force is because it's, you don't have to utilize your life force. Mm. So you're still utilizing the life force of, of something in order to bring about this physical manifestation. Mm. So sh should we have altars up, brother? Yes. Okay. So when the ancestors are going to require um, 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 some type of sacrifice. I hate to say it, whenever you deal with um, um, putting up your altar, this is going to have to be a sacrifice. 
know what I'm saying? Either you're gonna find, um, um, if you got animals around um, the crib, yeah. around the house, you're gonna find um, 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 in your most dire time in need, the ancestors know um, what might be good for you, you know what I'm saying, in order to keep you from out of particular trouble. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, um, um, my cat um, bought a blue jay um, um, to the front step of our store. Mm. In order to tell me that the cops was looking for me. Mm. <laughs> because a blue jay was known as a what? A jailbird. Mm. You know, or what they call it? Mm. Mm -hmm. what, what they call the um, um, blue jay? They said, um, 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 gosh, what's the name of it? They say blue jay, but blue jay symbolizes like a jailbird. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm. saying? You remember that saying, jailbird? Yeah. But the cat bought the, um, the blue jay blue right jay. to the steps. Never did that before. They never did that before. You know what I'm saying? A sacrifice. Mm. You see? So even if you don't do it yourself, nature will still do it for you. The answer is a move. Remember, it's called netter. Netter rule. Mm. The word netter is the same word as nature. Mm. Okay? So this isn't anything spooky. Mm. Right? Africans, uh, um, 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 Native Americans, or who we call indigenous people um, um, throughout the world have um, made statements of the fact that the water has spirit, mm. which is life. Mm. The trees have spirit, which is life. The mm. earth has spirit, which is life. Of course it does. How else could what you would consider um, 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 just sand or dirt produce life in which that would give you your own fruits and vegetables? Mm. Well, something living can't come from something dead in that manner. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Life comes from life. Mm. And that's why we say that there's no such thing as death because life only transcend into a higher life. Mm. Well, that death nonsense is out the window. Leave them damn European concepts alone. Out the window. So you're saying death is just a European concept. Yeah, that's their concept. Mm. Because because um, they don't have a soul. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they have to contend with um, with not um, 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 existing any longer mm. yeah. on, a, on another plane of existence. Yeah. We don't. We, we created all the planes. So we go where the hell we want to. Because mm. that's the soul. Mm. Soul is God. Now, so now, to experience. now depending on what consciousness and what level of thought since we're dealing with thought depending on what level of thought you on do you go to a different level of existence a different level of consciousness mm -hmm. or do we all go to the same level no it's different levels different levels and those different levels is um conveyed through your perception the way that you see things mm -hmm. so if you see um, one thing a certain way, um, then you going to put yourself in that condition once you leave this physical plane. What if you see yourself as Jesus going away, come and save you, and you're waiting for Jesus to come on a chariot, come down to earth and save you from the white man? Then actually you would end up having some type of, um, 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 once you leave the physical yeah. body, you would mm -hmm. see some type of that um, imagery mm -hmm. in order to correlate to that. Mm. The reason why is because the mind is the most powerful thing in the universe. The mind. The mind is the universe. Damn, brother, you done broke down the mind. The mind is a powerful thing. Yeah, the mind is the universe. The mind is the universe. 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 All seventy-six quintillion uh, uh, miles in diameter. It is the universe. You know what I'm saying? The mind and the universe is one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So once we realize that, then you know. Then where did the mind come from? Mm. The mind had to be created too. Mm. And that's when you go back to the source. <laughs> mm. All right, we got about 10 minutes left, Brother Aline. I want you to tell the people in the last 10 minutes what, tell them what can they do. I, and I know you showed some exercises. But the people like to see, not just somebody talking, but they want to know what can they do physically as far as breathing techniques, as far as meditation, whatever you may have to offer. Tell them the most vital bit of information they could get as far as their thoughts and manifesting what they want, brother. Okay. Um, since we've been speaking about the health issues, yeah. um, um, I'm gonna go to the health, um, what they call the, um, the healing breath. Yeah. And we're gonna do the healing breath um, technique. Okay, great, right? great, great. All right. Once again, back straight. Right. And what you're gonna do 
is breathing for a count of three. So, okay. Hold it for one, then out for three. So breathe in for three, hold it for one second. So three mm -hmm. seconds, one second, three seconds. Uh -huh. All right. Then we're going to take it up a notch. Yeah. But we're going to start out with that. So we're going to breathe in. And you do that seven times. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we're going to take it to the next level. You're going to go six, three, six. Mm. So you're going to breathe in for a count of six. Order for three. Out for six. You're going to do that seven times. Then you're going to do seven, one, seven. Mm. Right, so you're breathing for seven. Order for one, out seven. And those are what is called your healing breath techniques. Mm -hmm. So that's how you would do that. So seven, 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 21. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Goes back into three. You know what I'm saying? I'm symbolizing the um, positions of the sun, um, which is what? Heru, horizon, mm -hmm. our time, apex. You know what I'm saying? And then Atum, or Set, Set and Sun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It represents the three positions of the Sun. That's what that symbolizes. Mm -hmm. All right? So, um, that those are healing breaths. You can do those along with the fact of um, doing Reiki. Mm -hmm. And which that Reiki, um, um, which actually requires uh, an initiation, but it's not just initiation through a physical being. You can get initiated through the spirit also, through your dreams, mm -hmm. right? Or through your visions. All right, and if you are sincere enough, um, there are ancestors or um, advanced masters in which that would take you through um, the required levels um, of, of, um, of becoming a Reiki master um, teacher. All right, but I will show you um, the, the basic techniques of Reiki, in which that you rub your hands together, you go like this, or either you can clap, or either, you know what I'm saying, and then mm. you place it on top of your crown, on top of your head. Mm. And you would leave it there for three to five minutes. Then over the third eye, which mm. you go like this, mm. or either over your eyes like this, coming up mm. for three to five minutes. Mm. Then over the face, three to five minutes. Mm. Over the throat, you can do your hands in this position, or either in this position, over the throat. All right? Over the chest, like this, or either like this. Over the um, solar plexus, over the navel, over the genitalia. All right. Then over the back, which we're gonna stand up on this one. On the small of the back. Three to five minutes over the kidneys. Three to five minutes over the back of the heart. Three to five minutes over the back of the shoulders. Three to five minutes over the back of the neck. Three to five minutes over the back of the head. Three to five minutes and then back up to the crown again. That's called a microcosmic orbit. Now, you can also add in the macrocosmic orbit on which you put it on your knees, three to five minutes. You can go to your ankles, three to five minutes. And also, one hand on top of your foot, one hand on the bottom for three, and a half, um, three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. And vice versa with the right um, leg also, mm -hmm. um, left and right leg. Mm -hmm. All right? So, what happens is that you are actually tapping into the healing component of touch. Mm, of touch. Touch. Mm. All right. There's a um, science right now in the hospitals around the country, and over um, um, 3,000 um, hospitals around the um, country in which that is incorporated what is called touch healing therapy into their, um, into the, um, curriculum, into their curriculum. Mm -hmm. All right. So 
um, that's what has um, make, what we call it is Reiki. It comes from the um, Reiki, ancient comedic yeah. word yeah. Ra Ka. Ra symbolizing the um, the powers of the sun is rays, and Ka meaning the spirit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's talking about the spiritual sun, the powers in which that you tap into the cosmic um, frequencies in which that you help bring forth for healing within your physical body. Mm. All right. So remember, we taught you tonight the power of sound mm. in order to help heal. Um, in order to help produce a particular effect into and um, and help correct um, your reality, mm. we done now the power of touch mm. of healing, yeah, or Reiki, mm. all right. Um, we've also also touched on the um, powers of the various um, state of the seven stages of consciousness. Consciousness, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've also um, touched on um, certain. Um, Information in which that was coming from the CD of the secret as well as mm. also as you seen with my man Bobby Henry um, mm. breaking down the signs of the law of karma, karma yeah. and how we have um, um, put forth um, this particular um, mind state that we have created ourselves and mm. put ourselves in the predicament of. Yeah. All right, based off of our guilt and which that we attempt to keep carrying and we don't never cleanse ourselves of. Mm. Remember, Christianity teaches you. And I thought sure that for all the good Christians that we would have known this when, even before we even got to this level that um, um that you have to wipe your slate clean. This is what is meant by that when they, when the Christians um, always spoke about that. But but because they was only saying it rhetorically and they never gave no practicality to it or didn't know how to apply it, it went um, beyond the people mind state. Mm. But that's what we was given here, practicality. Mm. Alright, this has been a dynamic presentation from brother dr Arlene Bay dealing with the secrets behind the secret as well as the movie what the bleep do you know the brother has been dealing with the law of attraction how can you apply that to your everyday life as well as many other advanced metaphysical concepts behind that concepts that the people may not know about my name is Brother Rich. It has been a pleasure bringing you, bringing this to you. It's been a pleasure coming. All right. This is the Underground Railroad Productions. You can reach us on the internet at www.undergroundrailroadnet.com or I'm at Fulton Street Mall in Hanover Place. And you can reach Brother Arlene at www.free webs.com right slash cultural underscore freedom right slash and www.freewebs.com right slash raka r-a-k-a right slash mm -hmm. as well as also 910-488-1146 or 910-583-8360 it has been a pleasure interviewing you, brother. And I hope these people get <laughs> what they're supposed to get out of this interview, what I have gotten, brother. It has been a pleasure interviewing you, and I thank you for this interview, brother. Thank you. Peace. Peace, y'all.